Hello everyone, welcome to a Small Turbo channel. Alright, so today I'm going to present to you Module 1 in Science 8. So, this Module 1 serves as a supplementary tools to guide learners in studying science per grade 8 learners. So, this module has four lessons with a suggested time allotment of 8 to 10 hours. So, this uh, module is made by my husband, Mr. John Patrick M. Asenho. Alright, so, here's the table of contents. So, he just made this uh, module 1. Alright, so, let's go over. So he has this very nice intro. In grade 7, you described an object's motion in terms of displacement, speed, or velocity, and acceleration. You performed activities wherein you interpreted or created visual representation of the motion of objects, such as tape charts and motion graphs. The concepts were arrived at by studying examples of uniform motion or objects moving in straight line at constant speed. Then, you were also introduced to non-uniform motion where the object covers an equal distances or displacements at equal intervals of time. Alright, when a jeepney starts moving, it speeds up. When a jeepney nears a stop sign, it slows down. The jeepney is covering different displacements at equal time intervals and hence, it is not moving at a uniform velocity. In other words, the jeepney is accelerating. So most of the motions we come across in our daily life are non-uniform and the primary cause of changes in motion is force. So in this module, you will learn about the effects of force on motion. Newton's three laws of motion, the central organizing principle of classical mechanics, will be presented and applied to real-life situations. So, I don't know where my husband got this, maybe from a certain reference. So my husband, by the way, is a grade 8 science teacher, and I, by the way, is a grade 7 science teacher. So, he mentioned this at the end of module 1, you will be able to answer the following key questions. Do forces always all, uh, result in motion? Second is, what are the conditions for an object to stay at rest, to keep moving at constant velocity or to move with increasing velocity? How is force related to acceleration? Wow. Let's proceed to the next section. Oh, it's blank. Next section. So, it's the pre-assessment. So, part 1. We are going to identify whether the following statements describe acceleration, velocity, speed, average velocity, average speed. Let's go over. So, it is a vector quantity that refers to the rate of which or at which an object changes its position. Mm, it's maybe displacement. Huh, it's velocity. Alright, next. It is a vector quantity that is defined as the rate at which an object changes its velocity. Um, acceleration. Oh, wow, you got it right. Next, it is the distance traveled divided by the time interval for the motion. Um, speed. Average speed to be specific. Next, it is a scalar quantity that simply answers the question, how fast? Um, this, is, this is speed. Right. Next, it is defined as the displacement divided by the time interval during which the displacement occurred. Um, maybe this is velocity. Average velocity to be specific. Alright, so we're done answering this. Flashcards, activity. Let's proceed to the next part, and this is um, all about uh, watching and listening to the video. So, let me just show the video as the overview. Alright, so let's just take a look at the... Anyway, you cannot hear 
the audio the computer audio because I am using the free um, screen recorder so I'll just uh, fast forward this thing here so this video is just embedded in this um, ebook material so basically about um, scalar vector quantity next part we have another pre-assessment so we are going to identify whether it's a scalar or vector quantity so my previous knowledge regarding scalar or vector scalar it has it is only magnitude whereas vector quantity it, uh, it has a magnitude and direction all right so speed this should be scalar displacement this should be vector temperature this should be scalar mass this should be scalar force they should be vector and so with acceleration vector they involves direction submit answers and wow we got 100 over 100 let's just clear the answers before proceeding so that whenever you receive the soft copy it will be um, blank here there would be no correct answers being shown all right next all right, so let's go over to this next part here. So acceleration, its definition, and we have the formula involved. So we have for the average velocity, this is the formula. For the average acceleration, this is the formula. All right, so if it is speeding up, we have positive initial velocity, positive acceleration. Alright, so there are signs involved. Acceleration, vector, and velocity vector are in the same sign, same sign direction, positive acceleration, car speeding up to the right. Yes, so, so these are situations when can you say that there's acceleration, of course. Alright, now let's proceed to the next section. So we have here describing a force. So our common sense idea of a force is that it is a push or a pull, yes. Notice our careful choice of words. We refer to a force rather than simply force. We want to think of a force as a very specific action so that we can talk about a single force or perhaps about two or three individual forces that we can clearly distinguish. Hence, the concrete idea of a force acting on an object. Alright, first, a force acts on an object. Right, this is the first situation. Second is a force as an agent. Alright. Next, we have here some situations the rope, the spring of the agents. Okay, the pull of a planet and of on an object or on or near the surface is called the gravitational force. All right. Then we have contact forces. Then we have force is a vector quantity. If you push on an object, you can push either gently or very hard. Similarly, you can push either left or right, up or down. So that's has something to do with direction, so that's vector. Alright, so so contact force or non-contact force. So when can you say that's contact force? Alright, let's proceed to the next part. Example of contact forces, normal contact forces, tension force, friction force. Then we have non-contact forces, gravitational, magnetic, electrostatic. Alright, maybe we are ready to answer this assessment here. An apple falling down from a tree is one of the best examples of non-contact force. A box sliding down a slope, this is a contact force. The charging of the hair and attraction of paper beads towards it, that's a non-contact force. Iron pins tracted in the presence of a magnet bar without any physical contact? N non contact. 
a man pushing the box. Let's contact. Alright, let's submit our answers. And right, we got it 100 over 100. Okay, so that ends our module 1 of Science 8. Um, MELC based lessons. So uh, let's first clear the answers. Alright, so if you want to. I, uh, if you want to grab a copy of this, please refer to the description box. And please don't forget to open, because this is a K-pop file, open this with a Kotobi reader and download it using your desktop. Do not download it using your um, mobile phone because you might encounter errors. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in with this small terrible channel and see you on our next uploads and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for you to be notified of our future uploads. And another favor that I am going to ask you guys, please don't skip the ads. Alright, so thank you so much. That would be a favor that we are going to um, um, ask from you. Okay, so thank you so much. Bye-bye.